Okay, so, hi, it's an uh, uh, honor to introduce Ji Lin, who will be speaking on the recap of algebraic demarcus. Okay, I'd like to thank Nikolai for the introduction. Okay, so today I will briefly recall some uh, basic stuff about algebraic demarcus and the polynomial demarcus. Basically, I will follow the lecture notes of uh, Joseph Grayson. Okay, we can find his lecture notes online. And there are many other excellent lecture notes, for instance, the notes of input. Okay, and it gets a very excellent textbook by Hota, Takeshi, and uh, Anisaki. Okay, so, um, let's start. Okay, so this stuff is a smooth uh, algebraic writing. Okay. Over an algebraic closed field of this is zero. Okay. If you like, you can just take this K to be C. Okay, then we left DX, okay, to be the sub algebra, okay, generated by. So OX is a structure sheet of X, okay. So we let it to be the sub algebra generated by. Or the structure tree of the independence. Okay, so so in particular, uh, okay, so definition, okay, we call it DX the sheet of the visual operators of X. So let's see uh, what does this sheet look at, look, look like locally. Okay, so Okay, so locally. It's uh, up and open with the so. Then we can fix local coordinates. Actually, I just means the uh, responding tangent, tangent vector. In particular, if you treat this tangent shift to the center neighborhood, it will be equal to the direct sum. And in particular, the shape of differential operators they are is what you expect. Okay. So we have the the position is okay. Then you have the differential operators. So here, alpha is equal to alpha one, alpha n. Okay, it's a sequence of the uh, non elastic integrals. Okay, then alpha n. So take this position as alpha one over. Okay. In particular, for this description, we observe that in the, the x actually is the point coherent. Okay. Then let's introduce the definition of the module. So a left the x the sheet the x and it's also OX. So 
So the, the, the definition is pretty straightforward, I think. So um, for instance, let's see how is it connected with the classical linear PD series, for instance. So particle right. so, um, story. So for instance, we fix F to be an open subset inside CN. Okay. And then we let O to be the shape of also the ring of our model function on the X. So, okay, and then there we can let D okay to be those linear partial differential operator okay, with coefficients in O. Okay, in particular for each such partial differential operator, okay, we can write it as a uh, summation. Okay. okay, so uh, so this is the homomorphic function, less than zero, and this is just some um, differential operator as well. And from here, we can construct the following module. Okay. We like M to be E mod EP. Okay, the idea generated by this operator. Okay. Okay. Then in particular, it carries an action of P. Okay. So in classical story, we care about the solution of a division operator. Then in particular, here, if we have such a module, how can we see the solution okay, or, or just from this module structure of it. Then we consider the fully um homomorphism of a D to narrow homomorphism from M to O. Okay, by definition this just consists of all the actions. But we know that this form actually is that model to all itself. Okay. Therefore, actually it can be identified as those functions such that GP is so you need some simple identification, okay, and then you can see it. So in particular, you see the, the the home space here actually can be identified with the solution. Okay. And moreover, as we can see, we actually can replace a ring here by other rings. Okay, so for instance, we can replace O by the sheet of class distributions. Okay, for instance. Instead of just considering um homomorphic functions. Okay, so you can then you can see the solution in a more general function space. So this is the connection with the classical story. So another remark I want to make is that so throughout the lecture we will always assume x is smooth. Okay. Uh, it turns out that when x is singular. If you study, if you want to study the ring of differential operator directly, okay, this ring turns out to be very hard to study. So, for instance, it follows from the work of Bernstein, Gelfand, and uh, S. Gelfand. We let X to be following singular variety about by S Q plus Y Q plus Z Q. Okay, this is a singular variety. Okay, then can show that corresponding ring of individual operators they okay, defined in that way. Okay, it's not a series. And we 
when you expect your properties actually fails. So, so instead of studying, I mean, for singular varieties, instead of studying this model direct, directly, actually, we prefer to use the so called modern. Which one would you use? Or it's a good it's a good point. If you can just split the square, I think it is still okay. It's kind of like the basic up and space situation. So that can should mm -hmm. still be okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you're not sure. I mean basic up and space is a in that case, it's fine. Yes. You take the square here. Okay, so um, uh, yeah. So we replace by square. Okay, so it's an exercise. So we're going to take x. If I'm not mistaken, okay, so this can be identified as a conclusion of this one. So this is the other kind of thing. So for this situation, I think there's still a lot of different theory based on whatever. Uh, anyway. I'm not 100% sure about it. I believe there's a way to give up to Okay. Well, let's move on now. So, there's another situation where, when the D module, okay, so that D, well, that M, okay, the yeah, X module. There's a particular situation where <laughs> M is actually local here. Then in this situation, you can actually show that M is local here. Particularly it comes wrong. A vector bundle is a connection. In this case, we call M an integral connection. So here we introduce the concept of left demodulation. Okay, so we may want to get any notion like right demodulation. So first, let's check everything locally. Okay, so basically locally, if we have some upon coordinates, okay, we have a differential operator P. Then, I mean, the classical theory tells you that you can introduce this transpose right, okay. of the formal adjoint, which is minus R plus.
And this kind of operation turns out to be evolutive operation. So to do, okay, transpose the C to the two transpose compose with two transpose. And it is really a contract in the sense that if you're really comparing this uh, function here, okay. okay. So in particular, from this kind of evolution act, starting from starting from a left D module, okay, you can introduce a kind of right unit. But it is only pretty local. So to globalize it, we need to so we need to consider the canonical sheet. So that's omega x, the canonical sheet. Then it turns out that uh, this canonical sheet carries a right D module strip. Using the so called D derivative. So about this is remarkable. So like the condition is that it is, I mean, it, it is always like that, but actually it works for you. Yeah, so so it is always, so the definition requires it to be possible here, right? But the point here is that if it, it, if it is actually coherent, okay, then you can actually prove that it is actually local. Okay. okay. To make it more precise, okay, so every time we have a uh if there's a phone for instance, okay, we can let the tangent vector okay. So see that it's a tangent vector. At um omega on the right, okay, see the so called lead derivative. So basically, the new derivative it is defined as follows. Then you can show that under this action code, under this action, omega x okay, becomes a uh, right bit. Okay. And moreover, you can show that as a C algebra. We take the opposite of the x, so we actually it is as small as the omega x and the yes. omega x inverse. So from this kind of structure description, okay, you can, I mean, there's a natural equivalent between the category of the f module okay, and the dx opposite. So basically, we start our model here. Okay, you can send it to uh, omega x and zero, and and conversely, we start our model here. Okay, you can send it to omega x inverse, and it is really an equivalent of that.
But now, um, I mean, attached to a D module, there are several important invariants of it. So in the following, um, uh, let's make the following observation. So on the EFs, here's a standard order filtering. So basically, um, EFs has a natural filtration ordered by the degree of the diffusion. And uh, you can show that, okay, we can take the associated greater ring. Then um, it's a little hard to show that this is actually this has not been true. The structure shift of the uh, cotangent complex. So here, pi is okay. So in particular, local way, okay. So again, you can do everything local way. Um, this coordinate is that sine partial r. Uh, then gr f. Okay, you can show that this is actually as small as it looks. Um, all you again and uh, C1 and C1. HCI is the this is a formal symbol. H2 So general D modules are definitely not easy to study, but there's a particular class of coherent D modules. Okay. So you need to put some finite condition. So we like M, okay. It could be some filtration. Okay. Oh, okay. Here, filter. Yes. Okay, so basically it just means that M has a filtration, okay, and this filtration is compatible with the other filtration on the X, okay. Then we call a, a good filtration. The following equivalent condition for Essentially, it just says that the associated gradient actually is coherent. And let's just use it as a definition. There are several equivalent types of resolutions, okay. um, but uh, anyway, just, let's just use this as a definition, very natural definition. Okay. And it turns out that M is actually a coherent DX DX coherent. So many M has a good function. Oh. 
Okay, so in the following, let's just let M to be a DX theorem model. Okay. Yeah, by definition, okay, so the associate gradient turns out to be a coherent um, coherent module over the control of the potential complex, a structure sheet of the potential complex. Then we can define the following uh, sub variety of the potential So we let CHM of it. So CH we know the characteristic variety usually or, or usually it is also called the signal support. It has to be the support of these early models. So J F M theta okay is defined to be This so you may wonder whether it depends on the choice of filtration. It turns out that it does not depend on the choice of filtration. So the characteristic variety of a coherent model is uh, an important invariant. Okay, so for instance, um, some property. Mm -hmm. The first uh, C H M okay, it's a conic subset. In the sense that I mean, you have a natural scaling action, um, scaling action on C epsilon. It turns out that the HM is also invariant on this scale. And the second, okay, is one of the most important um, properties that uh, CHM. This includes what's a co isotope. Okay, so basically, you know that the potential has a metric supply structure. Okay, so you can put whether a, a variety of okay, a co isotope or not. It turns out to be co isotope. So from here, you can immediately reduce the dimension of the. Uh, 
what the previous variety of it is actually bigger than yeah. So of course here we are still dependent on the So, so this is a very important fact. Okay, so it was first proved by uh, Sato Kawaii and Kashiwara in the original setting. And later it was proved by Lagrange and uh, Gabriel independently of the big set, being a more general company. Right here, we can introduce the concept of polynomial model. So here, the model is called polynomial. Um, if the dimension of its characteristic rights is smaller than or equal to the dimension. Uh, also, um, I mean, here we need to consider a case where m is equal to zero. Okay, so usually we want that billion category. That's why we do the lower than equal to zero. So essentially, it just means that uh, if m is not zero, it just means that. Because the risk of rights is on a parameter. So does Connie mean Connie can each fiber? Only in each fiber? Uh, it just means that it's invariant on the scale. It's just invariant on the scale. Scaling is in fiber. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, is is the uh, single support equidimensional? Um, if it's holonomic, if it's holonomic, then AD would be in general. I, it might not be the case because because it is holonomic. Yeah, actually, each individual component always has dimension equals dimension of S. Dimension is like so, so this confusion, like a dimension is defined as the like maximal dimension components mm -hmm. or uh, like it's a good point. Okay, let's introduce the notion of the cycle of the Okay, then you will see. Okay, so um okay. Um, okay, so we can also uh, introduce a lot the fine notion called Kedrisi cycle. Okay, so before that, let me mention that for a short exact sequence. For here, for here is the F small D. You can show that the uh, the risk variety of okay. it and probably is supposed to be the union. Then let's introduce the concept of the risk cycle. So for here. Uh, the X module, okay, we introduce this Katiwisa cycle to be the following. I think it's the summation. So let's see to run over all the irreducible components that can be used for it. And for each irreducible component, we equivalent with some of this. For MC here, it's the land. 
breathing module localized as the internet. Is that our team? Yeah, okay, again, um, you can show that this multiplicity does not depend on the price. Okay, three. Okay, and uh, it respects the short intensity. Sorry, does this really make sense for uh, any coherent B module? Is it just for holonomic? Because, I mean, Here's coherent things are not really Artinian, right? Like, you could have infinitely many. Uh, but here, here we are talking about a social gradient. Uh, but I'm, I'm more concerned about the sum, actually. Oh, you mean the sum here? Yeah, like, uh, why, why would there only be finitely many irreducible? Oh, oh, I see. Irreducible components of the, the characteristic variety. Yes. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's CH and it's CH and. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So actually, based on the first perfect condition, that you can deduce that you can deduce a stronger so any irreducible component of C H G actually has dimension bigger than equal to the dimension. Well, let's see some examples of okay. this. So let's see the case when n actually is just an integral convection. Okay, n is all coherent. So in this case, we can introduce the following filtration on m. Okay, we let f i m to be zero or i is more than zero, okay. and we'll let it to be just m. Or I could get any. So indeed, this is a good filtration because M itself is already all coherent. And in particular, the social gradient is just as much as M itself. Okay. And because it's locally free, okay, or locally, it's just yes. some uh, copy of okay. it. R, R here is the dimension. Okay. And from here, you can just observe that the inflator, okay, for for this module, okay, also is anyway, it's just like this characteristic variety, okay, actually, it's just put to the zero section. Inside the okay. And the also, if you compute the characteristic cycle, okay. And it will be equal to R for this. The multiplicity is equal to R. In particular, in this situation, you see that uh, it is for the moment. So, and So intuitively, as you can see, so another remark I want to make is that, for instance, if our if our module is like 
um, D mod EP, okay, for some differential operation. Then it's characteristic variety. You can see that this will be the zero for the single so a power rate theme is equal to some virtual operator. So basically you just replace the partial here by this formal variable in the cotangent and then in the structure sheet of cotangent bundle, and then you look at its corresponding zero. In particular, as you can see, I mean, if there are more differential operators, then um, the characteristic variety will be at more and more differential operators. Okay, the characteristic variety will be smaller in some sense. In some sense, for the holonomic situation, it just means that. We can say the differential operator, I mean, the differential equation is, is usually called overdetermined. The system of the different equations. The possible notion. In particular, as you can expect, the solution space should be smaller in a suitable scale. And this, this turns out to be um, connected with the so called Aquarius constructability series. Which tells you that for holonomic D module, then it's going on. Then it's solution complex. It's actually constructed. Solution complex. So, I mean, here actually you can look with, with the derived category, or okay, the derived category of for non equivalent. Then you can look at solution complex, okay, and it turns out to be a complex of construct constructive okay. Then you can Just to be clear, it means solutions like taken in the analytic category. Uh, Yes. yes. Okay. And the, the key point is the finite dimensionality if you restrict to a fiber. Okay. You want to take it now or up to you? I mean, I'm all, I'm okay. I can continue this little part. Good now. Yeah, good. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let's take a few minute break and I'll do it for Part okay. two. Yeah. So based on this, I mean, based on the property for chapter variety, okay, so we know that it respects short exact sequence. Okay. In particular, we can observe that the whole normal system is preserved under subfunction and extension.
as a transition of the input. So the model, you just make it, okay, actually, uh, holonomic models are attenuated. Have and then finally, one of the most important property of for the model is that if M is monomic, then actually you can always find the open data subset of X. Such that if we restrict them to the aggregate dense, we say it's a full connection. Okay, so far, we briefly introduced uh, D modules, of okay, coherent D modules, and phenomenon. And we are going to study. Functors. Okay, let's also determine to choose a variety of something. So you only let's assume our variety has to be passive project or rejected. And under this assumption, we can prove that the category of DX modules okay, has enough injective. That you need a locally projective object. Okay, moreover, it has finite uh, homological dimension. Okay. So in particular, in the bounded direct category of uh, DX modules, okay, every complex can be represented by a complex of locally projected DX modules. Okay, so okay, so first let's study the full band. Okay. So if we have a function on Y, of course we can put it back to F, okay? And uh, they may wonder what about this responding differential equations of it, or the responding E modules. So we start from the Y module. Okay. Let's try to put it back to F, something. So that power way we can consider is full back as a particle in the for okay? <laughs> So then what remains to do is just to find the DX module structure, find the action of the DX. And then we know how the OX acts. So, so the remaining thing is just how the tangent vectors Okay. Okay, then we can define the action of the tangent vector as follows. Okay, we just fix the tangent vector to that. Okay. That's theta. Yeah, x um side x and s. Psi is an uh, element inside here and s is here. Okay, then it will be equal to psi times s plus psi theta theta s. 
So what do you see that you like here? So see that you is the natural morphism of here to um, so anyway, um, in the, the pullback coherent shape carries the natural DX model. Okay. So it carries the DX model stuff. So for convenience, we can reinterpret the pullback in the following way. So we will introduce the transfer by modules. We can write it as following. Okay, so we write it as OX and say there's no Y because it's Inverse UI. UI. Okay. okay, then we call this module uh, the transfer module in the S to Y. So in particular, this is a uh, left DX and right inverse UI. So in particular, we get a right exact functor. Yes, one answer at the inverse D one at the inverse D one module to the F. Okay, the right exact functor. In particular, uh, it, it behaves well under composition. So G composes F star, G composes F star composes G star. And we can also pass this function to the direct level. Now let's discuss the direct image. So the direct image function turns out to be more involved. Okay. Um, so first, a priori it is um, easier to define for right D module. So, so Let's again start from the right DX model. Oh, yes, yes. Now it's very natural to configure the following cancer. So basically, the transfer uh, by module is a left DX, right? I think we're still right about there because it's very natural to configure this cancer. And then we do the push forward. It turns out it seems to be a natural candidate. But uh, if, we, if we just define it in the following naive way, that's not behave well under like factorial properties.
but this definition uh, is not well. Position for this answer. Okay, basically, the reason is that the tensor here is the right to the Z functor, but the push forward turns out to be left. So, uh, we control the left is definitely the right of Z, it just does not behave very well on the crowd. Well, in some sense, we need to move to the, the right arrival. But before that, let's switch everything to left units. So the definition here is that the right is more little bit. But uh, we know that left be more is equivalent to right be more little bit. Just through answering the, um, answering the canonical shape. Direct so it's very natural to move the lower horizontal functor uh, and the lower functor to the above functor. Turns out that we have the following um, construction. Well, we can translate the functor between the right view modules so they do the left view modules using the above diagram. So the factor is given by um basically we send an M here to each forward uh, another transfer by module and we write it as uh, another direction of it what um x to y and here what is this bimodule? So this is equal to uh, omega x tensor dx to y and the omega y. You can easily imagine. Again, this functor still have the exactness pro uh, problem. Okay, it, it does not, it does not behave well under position. Okay, so we need to consider the corresponding direction. Okay, So let's pass to the derived level. So first we can definitely derive the two band function. Which you know the corresponding two band function by Dagger, okay, it is the normalized. And the following sense okay, for any complex okay, M dot, what can we send it to um, the X part, okay, the right answer? Then we do a shift from the dimension. Then you can show that, okay, this buffer takes the position. 
Like, so this is a pullback. What about the forward? What about the uh, the right direct image? So as we can see, I mean, for the uh, direct sorry, direct can I ask what? a question quickly? Sorry, how do how do we know that we land in the bounded derived category? Uh, how do we what? How do we know that we land in the bounded derived category? You're taking some derived tensor product, but a priori it could be unbounded, right? Like this happens for quasi-coherent sheaves in general. I mean, why the image arises in this idea? In the bound, bounded derived category. Yeah, why is? Uh, I, I see that, I think the actual here is that, I mean, all these kind of results, I mean, why, for instance, why the derived Image, uh, direct, direct image lies inside the body direct All these properties relies on the uh, So basically, the idea is that we first, I mean, for any morphism, we can break it to a close embedding. And smooth some version. But then we prove each uh we prove each I mean we we prove these kind of properties. We only need to prove the more close embeddings. So basically the eventual problem just goes back to the close embedding situation. Here we will use the Flores level. I mean, I guess it, it seems like it's probably using in a serious way that Y is smooth, right? Because that's the kind of thing that we typically mess up um, finite tour dimension. Yes, I see. But I think I think because Y is smooth, it's okay. It's... But if it's smooth, I believe it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like this is the, that's how it works for quasi coherent sheaves, right? You have to assume the morphism has finite tour dimension, but it's enough for the target to be regular. How about the uh, direct image? So we need y to be smooth in the I think basically I'm just saying if you if you try to generalize this to singular varieties at some point, then probably this inverse image would not land in the bounded derived category in general. But in that case, it's it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. And to define the uh, to find the direct image, okay, as we can see, we can break the definition to two parts. Okay, first we define the direct tensor, okay, then we define the uh, forward. So, from the EDF, so we, we break the direct, direct image to two parts. The first is things to the inverse line. So the first step of the same complex. Okay, so because all I mean what kept with yes is not injected and the local projected element. 
In particular, here we can actually use flower resolution. For any dog, you can take a time. Um, okay, then for this step, this type of uh, complex angular is the same to the right here. And here we use uh, injective resolution for. So then we define the direct fluid to be the composition. So that's the be okay. First, we still need to show that the image lies inside the bundle direct test for and it turns out that this functional uh, behaves well on the composition. And we also have a natural duality functor um, from this category. Yeah. So there's a duality function. Um, yeah, so it's offset. This could be said complex. So the most naive definition would be is you just say that our form of it is complex in the X. But you know that this, I mean, if you just look at this definition, it turns out to be a right given. So we need to cancel that string. And get it. Do a chip. Okay, so the shift here from is that uh, um, stands the whole number you might be whole number you might just concentrate in here. So in particular way, M is equal to the process B1, B2. Then you can show that the yeah, M actually it is also concentrated in the middle. Then it's equal to B1, B2. Okay. Um, so, okay, so these functors in D send, send DB to DB, but in general, it does not send, for instance, a push forward, does not send to be coherent. Unless that is fine. But what is what is very important is that it always stands for knowledge to for knowledge. If you don't need a proper assumption. So anyway, before that, let, let's uh, let's briefly discuss the situation where F is a closing back. So as we mentioned, any motion can be decomposed as the uh, close embedding, okay, composed with the smooth submersion, okay. Okay, therefore we focus on the case where F is a close embedding, okay. Well, let's use I to you know the close embedding. It turns out that for additional holes, okay. So let F divide to be the close embedding. Then 
it turns out that um, the push pull function is an exact function. If you take the cohomology, I mean, the push pull is a complex. Okay, if you take the cohomology, okay, it's not zero. It's possibly not zero only when k equals zero. In particular, you see that the, uh, this function, you just see the real function. So this license has mod. And this is a UI module or the UI module that is spotted there. Next. You buy apps to do those on one module for the other apps. Then, as far as the corporate theory tells us that. Um, so actually, we have equivalence of category for the apps. Okay, actually, it's equivalent to the one you want to put it on. So from here, we see that, I mean, you know, for instance, we can embed X to um, different smooth varieties. Okay, and just, for instance, we can embed X to Y1 okay, and X to Y2. Okay. And the corresponding uh, categories of UII modules for the apps, they are actually equivalent to each other. Okay, and the application is the equivalence of a billion category. Okay, now how is the equivalence given? Okay, so uh, here you can have a function that is intended to uh, just uh, push forward. Okay. And then conversely, okay, uh, the functor is given by the pool the pool band to normalize shifted pool band. So this is the virus frequency. And second, for any you are more to support the R apps. You take the module of this normalized pullback. So, so in some sense, after we can use this equivalence to define define a D modules on a single variety. Okay, so we just embed a single variety to a smooth variety, okay. and we consider the D1 module supported. Uh, D1 module supported on the single variety X, okay. and we just work with that tensor. I'm I'm not sure if you're going to say it, but it's important to point out that this holds also at the level of derived categories, right? Which is yes. Like completely false for quasi-coherent sheaves, so it's something that's 
behaves quite differently for D modules. Finally, we discussed that that the function that the right setting of the pointer is given to the H zeros. I mean, in the right setting, you just put this pump, right? Right, but then the pointer is just it's, it's just a whole whole pump. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The point here is that this this pump is actually just concentrated in the beta. Right? I mean, I mean, it's this one. It's, it's not around here. I mean, based on the above above perfect. Yeah. I think it's the it's the second point really that's kind of relevant for that. Like, because if I say the same thing for coherent sheaves, it's it's totally false, right? Like if I do push pull along the closed embedding for coherent sheaves, I pick up some torus typically, and that doesn't happen here. So finally, we just got the threat of these reflectors on the from the direct category of polynomial okay? In general, as we mentioned, um, the push pull is a small thing for hearing to come hearing, all that like those properties. But it turns out quite amazingly that this doctor always respects the autonomous. Okay. So, for the fact of it, so this doctor, of course, the device function also respects. And finally, let's introduce two new functors and, uh, and the briefly discuss the linear expansion. So if we find the proper control, we just define to be the composition of the original control. Start pullback. Again, this is the exit composed with original reactor. It turns out that all the things, the bonded direct chat for a whole knowledge, you know, just to bonded direct chat for a whole knowledge. And moreover, it is a very non trivial fact that we always have a Morrison okay, from the proper push forward to the push forward. Let see a now. Please. And which is that is Morrison. That is possible. So I think finally I want to mention um I want to mention some finite dimensionality characterization of polynomial modules and the classification of simple polynomials. So first we have the fully finite dimensional categorization of polynomial universe. So let's end the complex of of theory yet. Okay, yeah, the following statements are true.
first he said he come us at Clerus. You know, this is the money directly to your coming. The second, when any small accidents are kept up back so between the pullback on the end of it, we just pull back to the fiber. I mean, the fiber and X of it. When you taste the bottom, they are all finite So, the third categorization is that you can always find the filtration of it. Uh, uh, yeah, stratification so that we restrict them to the stratification comes to the way it seems a stratification of it. Close up that. That's R minus that's how fast down the smooth. And the vertical modules. I have trained to look on that. So here IR is the embedding. I have a spiral and I have to get So in particular, also, the only thing is very nice organization. And finally, let's discuss the classification of simple on any given. So basically, here we're going to use the notion of minimum extension of it. So previously, we discussed that for any polynomial the model is continuous. In particular, we can always find a Julian Harder sequence. Each sub quotient to do So in general, is there an explicit description of a simple polynomial? The answer turns out to be yes. So the simple polynomial of the very special feature is that why of it to be a locally closed smooth. Right. And let's assume that the embedding I here is alpha. It's really a very strong requirement. But alpha is here, we use that. So if we compute it to the module, okay, so M here is. Really, a three module is ordered to be zero. So, this will really be equal to four and it will be equal to zero. And in particular, they are both for them. And moreover, we have a canonical mock thing. 
and for some of us to wait to make people. Now let's introduce the following definition. We call the image uh, of this map. So let's see how this map by what? Uh, on the image of I am uh, the name of extension. I'm going to be denoted as L Y M. So this is the definition of the uh, new extension of the modest church. Now we have the following series. So if M is a uh, simple uh, autonomic module, UI module. Then you can use that this minimum extension and it's not so simple or not. And actually this is the unique uh simple function you know it's forward of the equivalent way it is the unique symbol that the property uh other, other way around right oh did i oh i made a mistake it's reversed yeah here's seven here's four here's The second, any simple will not be more doable. It's isomorphic to some of the extent of the So, why is satisfied about description of it? That means it will come back. And third, if we have two pairs, Y M and the Y prime and prime okay. Then these two simple holonomic demodes are as morphic. Okay, if and only if I am trying to share the same closure, okay. then then restrict to the open the subset as a model you can kind of restrict to the same open the subset for you. Okay, so, so this theorem gives us a classification of simple formality. So any questions? I think I will just stop here. Comment a bit more on like the importance of all of the modes and why. Uh, so, first, this in some sense, the in some sense, the simplest case, okay, because the I think one thing we did not mention is that so if we have like integral connection. I mean, if, I mean, just from the perspective of differential equation, I mean, if we have a differential equation, we will look at the solution, look at solution complex. Yeah, if you start well, from an integral connection, the solution complex that will be a little bit. Okay, and in general, here, if you start from Polynomial uh, model with regular singularity. Mm 
Yeah, actually, uh, this vision complex was the good part of it. And uh, and the uh, and the Riemann Hilbert actually just gives you an equivalence of the direct category of it. It's the the direct of the model. Yeah, so the, the solution functor of it gives an equivalence to you know what 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 is the target? The target is the deconstructible of the complex. The sense the Standard key structure to the perfect key structure here. And also, there, I mean, for holonomic demodulation, there's another very important notion called E function. So, I mean, there are several different motivations. Um, I mean, I mean, when people first come up with the idea of the model, the wrong idea is connected with the model continuation of some, some like, um, distribution. So you have some distribution, okay, and they satisfy some differential equation, okay, and you will ask whether they can be normally extend to the whole complex or whole complex plane. It turns out that for all I mean, it turns out that for some. For many classical distributions, they satisfy a kind of differential equation, okay, which turns out to be for more. And for the moment, you have a kind of B function, which is exactly related to the main of it. These are the equations I know, and maybe the audience has some other comments. Any questions from the Zoom audience? Uh, maybe I can just make a quick comment. So some things that'll be used later that um, weren't said. So the there's some basic adjunctions between these functors that uh, you, you oh, gave, right? So uh, I, I, yeah, I totally forgot to mention. Yeah, there's a adjunction. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so here I should mention that. Okay, so the proper polynomial, okay, this is the left adjoint to the two back, okay. And uh, up two back, okay, and here is the left adjoint to the. Uh, but it's the, it's the non normalized pullback, right? That it's left adjoint to. Uh, you, you, mean, you mean here it is not. Normalized. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the non normalized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny. So this like LF upper star, it's like it should be thought of really as F upper shriek. It's like that's the role that it plays, is the it's the same role as the it's the exceptional inverse image actually, because it's right adjoint to lower shriek. But it's just a, it's a funny thing because it's f upper star on coherent sheaves, uh, but it's sort of it's because this it, it's because of, we're using left d modules for right d modules it would be something more like exceptional inverse image anyway yeah okay so so the adjoint pairs are like three paired with the uh, stars basically. I mean, yes, yes. It's just some different notation. But, if, but, but those functors are defined on on sheaves. Like here we are working in a demodulus setting. So if you want to connect them, you need to remind them. Yeah, so under Riemann Hilbert, like the LF upper star corresponds to F upper shriek. Yeah. Right? And and so it, it really is like the usual like lower shriek is left adjoint. Right to upper shriek and upper oh, star okay, is left I to join to lower star. Yeah. I see. Any more questions, comments? 
Thanks so much, Elon. Thanks. Great talk.